impressive. The tools to detect nuclear explosions are slung into a remote outpost in Yellowknife, Canada. Ross Ashley and the team are upgrading seismic stations to detect atomic blasts. Well, we're currently at uh, White 3. This is uh, the broadband site. We're installing a new power supply, battery system, a new sensor. Uh, this is a rebuild of the, the system to you know, keep current technology. Uh, earlier uh, last year, we actually did some concrete work and some civil works. Now we're going to be flying in batteries and uh, structures and towers with solar panels and the wiring and a crew on site uh, basically to put everything together. Once all our crew is here, uh, it'll be a beehive of activity with just everybody kind of doing their own little jobs and uh, it, it'll, it'll get fairly busy. It's a massive logistical effort. Around 60 tonne of equipment must be flown in to 20 different sites. Together, they create an array, like a giant microphone, to track and record vibrations in the earth. The terrain here is very rough. In winter, it's fairly accessible. However, there is still no road access throughout the year. So the only way uh, to efficiently get people and uh, equipment and, and the goods here is to helicopter. So there's a lot of helicoptering back and forth. Uh, basically, they'll be busy all day long back and forth to Yellowknife to the site here. At the heart of each station is a seismometer. This one is kept in a cave, tunneled into solid, stable rock. It protects the sensors against extreme cold that in winter can drop to minus 40 degrees Celsius. Jacques and Scott have come to replace the old sensors, once used by the British to eavesdrop on the Soviets. This actually is a remnant of the Cold War. And this was actually put in by the uh, by the British, I think in the late 50s, early 60s or something like that. And it was to keep tabs on the, the Soviets and, to, and their nuclear tests and whatnot. And so this site was selected because it's on obviously very old competent bedrock and it's north so the signals from the Soviet would just travel across the Arctic over this way. And so basically that's how it was established originally, and then uh, Canada took it over sometimes in the 60s. So the Geological Survey of Canada took it over sometime in the 60s and kept it for that reason, the purpose as well, until it got a new purpose as far as for the Test Ban Treaty and whatnot. Our mandate is to look for nuclear explosions, so uh, we are interested in global seismology. We, we look at uh, distant events, very small magnitude distant type events. And this seismometer is ideal for recording such type of events. The new broadband sensor detects high and low frequencies. It's so sensitive it can uncover small explosions from half a world away. This station is one of over 300 dotted across the globe to verify the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty. It's designed to detect nuclear explosions anywhere by anyone. the solar panel arrives, it will power the station. Yellowknife's high latitude stretches the days. 18 hours of sunlight each day means the team works late into the evening. It's an entirely different picture in winter. The array is about 400 kilometers south of the Arctic Circle. There's a problem at the Red 8 station that Ross needs to check out. This is the original uh, vault built in the 1960s. Uh, this houses the seismometer. Uh, a lot of these are uh, 
uh, very old, the metal is rusting, the concrete has become quite porous, and unfortunately some of these are uh, subject to uh, letting water in and icing up, uh, effectively desensitizing the seismometers. Yeah, this is the original vault. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a couple of inches of uh, ice on the bottom. This is from uh, water in uh, fall leaking in or throughout the early part of winter and then freezing. Uh, right now the seismometer and the digitizer are actually uh, uh, frozen to the ground in a couple of uh, few inches of, of ice. The ageing equipment is well past its design life. It must meet tough standards set by the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. The data must be transmitted around the clock to Vienna, Austria. A station can only be down for seven days per year. As part of our um, upgrade project, uh, all uh, 18 short period sites are having a new vault installed, which is uh, this here. Uh, coupled to bedrock, there's a minimal amount of uh, very high grade uh, cement that the vault is cemented in. Uh, it has uh, many inches of insulation around a plastic vault, which holds a seismometer, and then this aluminum uh, box is built around it more for protection and, and uh, you know, a little protection from the elements and from animals and so on. The rusting radio towers that transmit the data will also be replaced, but the biggest challenge? Power. Fred Murphy navigates across frozen lakes to reach the stations. The propane fuel is heavy, so is the vehicle that carries it. Refueling the tanks can only be done once a year in winter when the ice is at its thickest to hold the weight. Yeah, then we pump for like half an hour or 45 minutes to fill the tank. It's cumbersome and labour intensive. As part of the upgrade, solar energy will power the sites. Uh, hopefully the, the solar power supplies now. Uh, should be very reliable and hopefully uh, run without propane or little propane which of course is good for the environment and uh, uh, very efficient uh, green power will be used. It's taken almost two years to upgrade the 20 stations. Now one of the final radio towers is to be installed. It's a huge achievement. The action is at Red 5. Ross doesn't want to miss it. I know we're all part of a, a big picture in our little part up here, which is, uh, you know, is, is very inhospitable for some people. The array is to detect underground nuclear testings and uh, you know any, any man-made or, or uh, natural events can be detected, uh, which is helpful to scientists all over the world. The data collected by the network is a goldmine of information to help understand our planet and warn of natural disasters. try to do our job as, as well as possible. Um, we strive to, to install and maintain and operate the network uh, at these high standards because this is a requirement set and uh, it's personal gratification for us as well uh, to see that your hard work has paid off. We always want to make sure that uh, what we build, what we construct, stand the tests of time. And, you know, we actually take pride of trying to ensure that the equipment keeps running as long as possible, as, uh, because then that shows the quality of our work, I guess, to some extent. At least personally, that's how we see it. That if it keeps running and is problem free, then that shows that we've actually done a good job. The 
the hard work pays off. The signal flows into the central recording facility. In less than five minutes, it's transmitted to Ottawa and then on to analysts in Vienna. So this is a, a proof that uh, the station which was installed today is sending data to Definitely we know that the, this, the installation was successful, so uh, it, it's a good feeling. Gonna take another run. 